Welcome to the It Was a Thing on TV podcast, episode 13, submission 180, The Tommy Westfall Universe. Careful with that, son. Remember I told you that? I don't understand this autism thing, Pop. Here's my son. I talk to him. I don't even know if he can hear me. Because he sits there all day long in his own world, staring at that toy. What's he thinking about? All right, all right. Come on, son. Let's go wash our hands, all right? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I'm Mike Klaus, and Chico Alexander is with me, and Greg Diener is with me, and we're going to have a very interesting episode today because we're not going to focus on a TV show per se. We're going to focus on a concept, and we're going to have a couple episodes like this in the near future. We, we're going to have one about video games that were based on TV shows, and oh, we got some bad ones. And we've come up with other ideas like lunch boxes and action figures and and trading cards and, and uh, some other and board games. Uh, but we're going to focus on specifically something called the Tommy Westfall universe here. And you heard in the open the last few moments of the final episode of St. Elsewhere. And that's the basis of the Tommy Westfall universe. So Tommy Westfall is the a son of one of the doctors of St. Elsewhere, and this son happens to have autism. And he's holding a snow globe and is just peering into it, and he's uh, non-communicating, just peering in the snow globe, and uh, his father takes him out of the scene and tells him to put down the snow globe, the toy. And when you look at this snow globe, you see a you see St. Allegis in there, the hospital that... St. Elsewhere took place in. So now this theory is that St. Elsewhere is all in the imagination of Tommy Westfall. And over the years, some people have taken it further by saying, oh, well, this character from St. Elsewhere was in this show. And this it isn't just limited to characters crossing over. It could be products. It could be names but so at this point there's well over 400 shows within the tommy westfall universe which hypothetically if you think about it if saint elsewhere was a dream of tommy westfall wouldn't it make sense that all these other shows are figments of tommy westfall's imagination the first thing we're going to look at just for an example how this sort of starts how, how this ch chain reaction works of going from St. Elsewhere to ultimately you get into Doctor Who. Okay, how do we go from St. Elsewhere to Doctor Who? So follow along. So St. Elsewhere's Westfall Craig and Oshlander visited the Cheers bar. So now Cheers is within the Tommy Westfall universe. Cheers is Norm Cliff and Dr. Crane or Doctors Crane. They visited the Wings Airport. So now you've got the Wings Airport within the, the, the universe. Cheers spun off the Tortellis. Future induction, by the way, <laughs> uh, with Carla. And then Cheers also had Frazier as a spinoff. John Larroquette shows John Hemingway called into Frazier's show. So now you've got John Larroquette's show in the universe. 
The John Larroquette show referenced Yo-Yo Dine, uh, who is also a client of Angel's Wolfman Hart. And then Angel was a spinoff of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And then Wayland Utani is also a client of Wolfman Hart on Angel. And they made some of the weapons used by Firefly's Malcolm Reynolds in the Battle of Serenity. And then a Firefly class ship from the uh, from uh, the unique to the, uh, to the Firefly universe is visible in a scene of Battlestar Galactica in 2003. Uh, and even though uh, there's the Battlestar Galactica from 1978, that's not counting in this. This is just limited to Battlestar Galactica in 2003. And then Caprica was a uh, prequel spinoff of, of the 2003 Battlestar Galactica. But then also uh, Red Dwarf, uh, the crew of Red Dwarf comes across a spaceship graveyard, which includes a Wayland yutani ship, which connects it to Angel, and an Eagle ship from the TV series Space 1999. <laughs> so yeah, we're not even talking characters overlapping, we're talking props, merchandise, ships. A Klingon bird of prey from the Star Trek universe uh, is also seen in the graveyard. So now we bring the entire Star Trek universe into this. Uh, an eagle ship from the series TV series Space 1999 is in the graveyard as well. Now here's where we get to Doctor Who. The TARDIS from Doctor Who appears in the hangar bay of Red Dwarf. It can be seen during the launch of the Starbug in the episode Thanks for the Memory. I remember that episode. So that's how Doctor Who is now in the Tommy Westfall universe. And then it uh, also makes other connections. Uh, it brings in the whole Doctor Who thing, uh, not just uh, from the time era of whenever the uh, Red Dwarf episode was, which I'm guessing would be the 1996 incarnation because that was a late 90s show. But now you bring in also the 1963 and 2005 versions because they all had a single canon, the TARDIS, and the incarnations of the different Doctors between all the versions. And then to take it a step further, since I know Greg and, and Chico like their Doctor Who, K-9 and Company, future installment! <laughs> K-9! K-9 and Company was a pilot for a spinoff, uh, aired as a one-off episode broadcast as a Christmas special in 1981, featuring K-9, the Doctor's uh, companion, and Sarah Jane Smith. So that's how we sort of made the connection between St. Elsewhere and Doctor Who. That's what the entire universe is about. And the universe is, like I said, 400 plus different shows. And we're going to add to it in a little bit. Uh, some of the shows that fall under the, the Tommy Westfall universe, some big shows, 24, Adam's Family, Alf, All My Children. Uh, so now we're uh, tying in daytime soap operas. And Archie Bunker's Place, which if you got Archie Bunker's Place, you need to have All in the Family. Andy Griffith's show, we talked about Battlestar Galactica in 2003. Arrested Development is in there. Beverly Hillbillies is in there. The Bob Newhart Show, Bewitched, Brady Bunch. And also the Brady Brides, future installment. And the Brady Bunch Variety Hour, also a future installment. And the Bradys, also a future installment. <laughs> and we mentioned uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I mean, the list goes on and on. We mentioned Coach in uh, the last episode. Coach is in the universe. So, yeah, I mean, there's literally like 400 shows some very popular ones, some that literally lasted a handful of episodes or even never got out of the pilot stage. But but there's more, but, you know. Yeah, and, uh, and there is a resource. If you just type in Tommy Westfall Universe in your browser, it'll take you to thetommywestfall.wordpress.com. They have the entire list. They also have like a map, a grid showing how everything is intertwined together. And, and it looks like, like the worst street map you've ever seen in your life. I mean, it, it starts off with the two main branches. There are two, there's two main branches, 
St. Elsewhere, obviously, and then actually Homicide, Life in the Street. Those are the two main branches. Yes, because the St. Elsewhere characters of Dr. Roxanne Turner, played by Alfrey Woodard, and Dr. Victor Eric, played by Ed Begley Jr., appeared on an episode of Homicide, Life on the Street. So yeah, those are the two main intersections, Homicide, Life on the Street, St. Elsewhere, and that spreads out to some 440 shows and again, we're going to add that in a little bit. The Actually, where the biggest connection is, from what I've seen, we talked about that this doesn't in, in involve just actors, or not necessarily actors, characters showing up in other TV shows. We mentioned props. One of the big ones, and this connects a ton of shows, is through a fake brand of cigarettes called Morley Cigarettes. Not Marlboro. Box looks the same as Marlboro, but it's called Morley. And I'm going to just tell you the list really briefly of how Morley ties into all this, because there's a bunch of shows. And obviously that sort of gives you an opportunity to then make connections with those shows. So Jack Bauer smokes Morley Light on 24. Violet has a pack of Morley Lights in American Horror Story Murder House. Morley's are smoked in The Americans. Becker, too, smokes Morley Lights. Several characters on Breaking Bad smoke Morley's. Burn Notice features Morley prominently in multiple episodes. Hank on Californication smokes Morley's. They appear in several episodes of Cold Case. Pickles brings Richie a box of Morley chocolate cigarettes on the Dick Van Dyke show. <laughs> so, I mean, that predates uh, the say it elsewhere or, or the time of Westfall Universe by a good 20 to 25 years. That's I just find that funny. Chocolate cigarettes, Morley chocolate cigarettes. Dr. Mark Green finds a box of Morley's in his daughter's room on ER. Morley's are sold on Everybody Hates Chris. BB smokes Morley's on Frasier. In the one where Rachel smokes on Friends, guess what she smokes? She smokes Morley's. On Heroes, a character almost lights a Morley indoors. Morley cigarettes are smoked on Huff. Morley's were, all, are, were also primarily featured in an episode of Jake 2.0. Marley's are sued for causing cancer on Judging Amy. <laughs> Morley's are smoked by Lieutenant Matt Cavanaugh on an episode of Killer Instinct. Lisa Prince on Kingdom smokes Morley's. On The L Word, Bet and Shane share a Morley. On Malcolm in the Middle, Lois had a pack of Morley's stashed in with other items she was hiding from her family. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, God. This is getting a <laughs> <laughs> Show Mannix finds some Morley's in an old suitcase on Mannix. On the middle, Aunt Edie receives a cartoon. Well, I'm guessing that it's supposed to be carton, but it says a cartoon of Morley's. <laughs> a carton of Morley's. Morley's are common on Mission Impossible back in 1966. Morley's appear on a desk in Nash Bridges. A suspect is prevented from lighting a Morley on New Amsterdam. Porn stash on Orange is the New Black tries to light a Morley butt. And who hasn't tried a Morley butt, especially on Orange is the New Black? Uh, Morley's feature in the Reaper series finale on Saving Grace. Grace is given a Morley by a suspect. Lip smokes Morley's on Shameless. George Costanza smokes a Morley on Seinfeld. Morley's are advertised on Sordid Lives, the series. Ray Butts has Morley on Space Above and Beyond. Special Unit 2 investigates investigate the case of a woman... Uh, stealing Morley's and other items from a convenience store while sleeping. Morley's are also seen numerous times in The Strain, that 70s show. Uh, Eric Foreman had to smoke Morley's as punishment. Morley's also appear uh, in The Walking Dead, Up All Night. Uh, Gary has to resist by Morley's on that show. Tara of the United States of Tara keeps Morley's in her glove box. Halia on Weed smokes Morley's. Breaking Bad, CSI New York, The Dick Van Dyke Show, ER, Frasers, Heroes, Mannix, Medium, Mission Impossible, Nash Bridges, Walking Dead, and 24 also appear elsewhere in the the Timing Westfall universe. Whew. So, yeah, you can see just by a stupid brand of cigarettes or a pack of cigarettes or, or a cigarette, it, like, I don't know how many shows I went through, but there had to be close to probably 25 or 30 shows. That's a lot of cigarettes. That, that's smoking that's a, a lot of butt. Oh, never mind. Smoke if you got him. Remember, kids, smoking is wrong. 
Indeed, yes. We we do not uh, tolerate smoking. We don't want you to start smoking. It's a bad habit. We did not encourage you to do it. We're we're just here goofing around. Yeah. So yeah, the, uh, just that huge connection to just a brand of cigarettes. It, it, it's just amazing. Now, the big part of this episode, and and this isn't going to be a long episode because it, it's just basically talking about uh, the, the connections and and uh, the, the different ways they're intertwined and how this could all uh, go back to Tommy Westfall in a very hypothetical sense. Mm-hmm. But we have some revelations of our own, don't we, gentlemen? Yeah, oh yeah. And I'll tell you right now, they're going to blow your brain hole. Oh, yes. Yeah. We're going to break the internet, as the kids say. We're going to break the internet, and it's not going to be because... Greg is balancing a glass of champagne on his ass. I did not need that mental picture. Well, blame Gritty. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the, the answer I was expecting, but I'll take it. Well, no, it's in reference to the to the picture Gritty posted the day he debuted. The Photoshop of him and Kiss Kim Kardashian. He, he's He's right about that. I'm going to let Greg, since Greg, I think, was actually the person who discovered this. Greg, tell us what big connection you'd like to add to this. Well, guys, do you remember on International Women's Day when Buzzer had a marathon of all great shows that featured those female pioneers in television and game shows? Yes. Yes. Well, remember when they had Vicki Lawrence and Carol Burnett as their characters from Mama's Family. Mm-hmm. Yes. They had also, opposite them, they had McLean Stevenson and Joanna Gleason as their characters from Hello, Larry. So, Hello, Larry! If, oh, sorry. Yes. So, And actually, that's the reason why we did Hello, Larry this week, and we're following it with this, because Hello, Larry is one of a number of of big revelations that we we have. So Hello Larry was on Password Plus, or the characters on Hello Larry, which is already in the Tommy Westfall universe. So therefore, Password Plus is in the Tommy Westfall universe, but also because, as Greg said earlier, the characters from Mama's Family were on Password Plus. So that means the characters from not just Mama's Family, but also the Carol Burnett show now come into the universe hypothetically. And really, if you think about the bigger picture, doesn't that mean Tommy Westfall also imagined the contestants who are real people? So that means Tommy Westfall created all of humanity. Not to be blasphemous, but you could interpret it that way. So yeah, Hello Larry's characters were on Pasture Plus, Versus Mama's family's characters, so now that opens a whole new, uh, a whole bigger thing because surely there's ways to connect Mama's family. Why, well, absolutely, Mama's family was for one on Family Feud, so we could definitely connect Family Feud and Richard Dawson to that, which then also brings in Match Game, and then all, obviously all of those shows, especially Family Feud, which has been running for, you know, 45 years or so almost, all the families that were on those episodes were thought of hey, by Tammy Westfall. Oh, hey, wait, wait a minute. I just thought of something else. Mama was also on Jeopardy, right? Mama was on Jeopardy. So wait well, a minute. Oh my if, God. If Mama created all the pe- if if Tommy Westfall created all the people that were on Jeopardy, does that mean uh, that does... Tommy Westfall created the Omnibus podcast? I think that means Tommy Westfall created Chico. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this oh my God. Oh my God! Does this mean I'm a big fan of Chad Allen's imagination? Oh my God! Well, well, hold up, hold up! I thought of if Tommy Westfall created the Omnibus podcast, does that mean that the Futurelings are also created by Tommy Westfall? Which means they also created you, buddy. Yeah, I mean we're both Futurelings, so we're all part of 
oh my gosh, I need to like relax. But but also on top of that, you actually brought in something else I was going to mention. You mentioned Mama was on Jeopardy. Well, Cliff Clavin was on Jeopardy. I mean, there's your Cheers connection, so that's a nice quickie connection. But also, who else was on Jeopardy? You had uh, Dorothy Sabornak from The Golden Girls. And so now you get The Golden Girls and Empty Nest. That's all in the in the uh, the universe. And Golden Palace. Oh, by the way, another installment, Golden Palace. But yeah. so you're 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 adding all of these shows. And again, I mean, now, you know, it's gone outside of television. This goes into reality. Uh, but also there were some other connections that we had come up with, not just the Hello Larry characters on Pastor Plus, which also then had Mama's Family characters, but also Alf, he hosted and appeared on Hollywood Squares in both the John Davidson version, and he at least appeared, maybe not necessarily hosted, on the Tom Bergeron version. That's and you can obviously make more... The stars. You, well, you, well, Dance with the Stars, yeah. But also you can make more connections because the Bergeron version had Bear in the Big Blue House. It, hell, hold up. Bear, Bear, in the Bear, Bear in the Big Blue House, who sat next to opposite on Hollywood Squares, Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, so is, wrestling is all part of the Tommy Westfall universe now. Yes. The entire WWE's existence is all in the universe. And you can tie in WCW, ECW, AEW. You can tie in all that. Uh, and also, actually, this is a very timely one because of uh, who passed uh, the day we're taping. Uh, Big Bird has been on all three versions of Hollywood Squares, the uh, Davidson version, the Bergeron version, and the Peter Marshall version. Rest in peace, Carol Spinney. Indeed. Big, big loss. I mean, that, that really does sting, especially since he just retired. Ooh. So, yes. So now you've got, because of Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch, uh, I, I don't know if Oscar the Grouch did which versions of Hollywood Squares he did, but surely he definitely did one. But even if he didn't, Big Bird, was definitely, sure. on, Big Bird was definitely on the Marshall version. He was definitely on the Davidson version. And I've heard he was on the Bergeron version. So that connects Sesame Street to all of this. And then by connection, the Muppets. Yes. So, yeah. So, so I mean, th th these are, the, you know, we're, we're making more connections here. And then also, Leave it to Beaver's already in the universe. How's Leave it to Beaver in the universe? So how does Leave it to Beaver fall in the Tommy Westfall universe? The mugshot of Malcolm T. Wiggins from the X-Files episode Titanus appears on the wall of a police interrogation room in the Veronica Mars episode Leave It to Beaver. Additionally, the fictional car rental company Lariat, where Mulder and Scully always rented their cars, was featured prominently on Victoria Mars episode Rat Saw God. So, I mean, it sounds very iffy and tenuous at best, but Leave it to Beaver is, it, yeah, it's listed on the, the master list as being part of the universe. So does that mean also the best in Hollywood Squares Hour is part of the Tommy Westfall universe? That's where I was getting to, because if you remember on Match Game Hollywood Squares, the first half of the game all the celebrities had their real names. You had Richard Deacon and Barbara Billingsley and Jerry Mathers and Ken Osmond and Gallagher, who, who we all know was the manic melon smashing uh, freak from uh, Mayfield back in the, the last season. Okay. Maybe he wasn't, but that just sounds like a great tie in because Gallagher and the leave it to beaver cast doesn't make any sense. But the second half of the show, the squares and the super match, they replaced all the actors' names with their character names, except for obviously Gallagher because because Gallagher is, is a character in his own right. So you had Jerry Mathers was Beaver, and you had Barbara Billingsley as June, and you had Richard Deacon as Mr. Rutherford, and Frank Bank as Lumpy. So they didn't just come up with those names. I mean, those are the character names. 
So that, at least in my interpretation, brings Match Game Hollywood Squares into the whole Time of Westfall universe. And again, j- just by association, obviously at some point through like six degrees of separation or electricity or whatever you want to call it, we have somehow met those people somehow in life, you know, through different connections. You know, maybe I know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody whose sister was on Mash Game Hollywood Squares Hour. As ridiculous as it sounds, that does tie in like everybody. Oh, I mean, guys, 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 guys. I, I just I, thought of something. Were you, thinking of Butch Hart, were you thinking of Butch Hartman just now? Yes! John Mulaney's sword. I'm not dead. Yes. Butch Hardman's, who was on Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour as a contestant on the January 3rd, 1984 episode. As we all know, he went on to create the Fairly Odd Parents. So that means if Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour is part of the Tommy Westfall universe by Butcher of Believe to that means Fairly Odd Parents is connected too. I would agree with that. I wouldn't necessarily agree with the John Mulaney thing. But no, I mean, he was only saying it because he looked like John Mulaney, obviously. Yes, obviously. Did you see that? Come on. You don't think they look alike. I I do think they look alike. That's the thing. But yeah, so I can agree with that. Butch Hartman was on Match Game Hollywood Squares as a contestant on, as you said, January 3rd of 84. The last original, uh, not original, but the last, uh, let's say, first run or, or episode in the first batch of episodes uh, that Buzzer has aired. And yeah, Butch Hartman obviously created the Fairly Odd Parents, so I don't see why you can't make that connection, too. So that that's a very valid point. I mean, he didn't use a character name there or some sort of pseudonym. It, it was created by Butch Hartman. I think it definitely falls within the universe. So, yeah, that's like our big revelation is we've just like blown this wide open because. Oh, wait. Okay. Back. Okay. Back to Jeopardy for a moment. Uh Dorothy Dorothy from the Golden Girls was on Jeopardy. James Holzhauer was also on Jeopardy. James Holzhauer was also on The Chase. So uh, you're saying that Mark Labet is a figment of Tommy Westfall's imagination? I think to- I think Mark Labet is a figment of Tommy Westfall's imagination. <laughs> Hold up, wasn't Mark Labet also a contestant on The British Millionaire? Yes, yes, he was. He was. So does that mean Chris Tarrant is a figment of Tommy Westfall's imagination? Which means uh, all of which means. ITV Carlton, because he hosted the first ever show on that network, which was a Carlton New Year back in 1992, I believe. That's in the Tommy Westfall universe. Basically, all of ITV is in the Tommy Westfall universe. So that means almost anything on Brickbox from ITV is part of the Tommy Westfall universe. Precisely. Remember that next time you watch the Beltry Circle, San Francisco people. We're just coming up with more connections and and revelations as we go on. I didn't see that one coming. But again, I mean, that sort of emphasizes the point that just through like attrition or whatever you want to call it. Everything is sort of connected to the Tommy Westfall universe because of Password Plus or because of Hollywood Squares, or because of Jeopardy. And again, when we're talking about Jeopardy, they've had over 8,000 shows. So, you know, how many unique contestants have they had? Easily over, like, 16,000. Maybe even closer to 17,000. What up? Mike Riley was a contestant on Future Entry. Mon- no, he contestant was a on Jeopardy who would host Jeopardy. Future Entry Monopoly. That's what I was saying. He would go on to host future entry Monopoly, which means Monopoly is part of the Tommy Westfall universe. But but wait, I, I'm going to take it a step further, not just with Mike Riley. So Jeopardy was created by Merv Griffin. So 
technically that means everything Merv Griffin ever created would be in the universe, including the Merv Griffin show and Wheel of Fortune and whatever other shows Merv Griffin created in his lifetime. Monopoly was mentioned. Merv Griffin's crosswords. Merv Griffin. Another future entry? What? If you want to go back in the day, let's play Post Office could count. And there's uh, Reach for the Stars, which actually in itself, Reach for the Stars was the bonus round on Ruckus, future installment. So yeah, I mean, right there, just with the Jeopardy connection connecting to 16 to 17,000 people, not even including the, the staff and Alex Trebek, who, by the way, now we can bring in Pitfall into the universe. Previous we can bring, oh, uh, Hey, we could we can bring in the the final episode of the 1980 High Rollers into this. Also, a future so that episode. Means, <laughs> that means the that means the ten thousand dollar fishbowl is part of the Tommy Westfall universe. So yeah, I mean, this like extends beyond like just television reaches now. We've connected literally, I mean, just on, on the face value between Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy, probably in the range of, what would you say, forty to 45,000 people have been contestants on those shows over the years, not even counting the, the, the 60s Jeopardy. So, yeah, I mean, so so we're probably looking at a legit forty to 50,000 people right there as contestants, even after you add in the, the 60s Jeopardy. So, yeah, this is, like, mind-blowing because I'm sure everybody knows someone who's been on one of those shows, whether it's, you know, a direct friend or a friend of a friend or a coworker or some relationship. I mean, obviously, the two of us have a direct relationship with, with Chico. And, you know, hopefully me. Call me Maggie. I mean, I have other connections to Jeopardy because my sister's best friend was on Jeopardy would have been almost eight years ago at this point. And, I mean, obviously a number of us have friends who've been on Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune or both. And then, sort of by extension, couldn't we then include other TV shows they've been on? So, like, television's Ryan Vickers, for example. He was on Let's Make a Deal... He was on Price is Right. He was on Wheel of Fortune 2. He was on Countdown, so now we're going overseas. So really, yeah, and, and then you take Countdown another step. It was the first TV show shown on Channel 4 in Britain back in 1982. Does that mean Channel 4 is part of the universe? <laughs> so it gets pretty deep. As you can see. We're breaking the internet. We're breaking something. I don't know what we're breaking, but um, but yeah, th this is mind blowing, and I'm actually going to submit this. I'm I'm, I'm going to actually tag the the Tommy Westfall Twitter page on this, even though they haven't done updates in about four years, three and a half years. This might be worthy of an update, uh, at least for the connections of Password Plus and. Hollywood Squares and Jeopardy using the Cliff Clavin and then tying Cliff Clavin and Jeopardy to the Golden Girls and also tying it then to uh, Mama's Family, like you said. Yeah, and then by extension, I'm sure you can make more connections through hey, just those shows. Hey, hold up, guys. Was it Morge Simpson on an episode of Jeopardy? Yes, yes she was. She was. And, and we the met the Simpsons. Justice. And The Simpsons did a crossover a couple of years ago with Family Guy. So that means Family Guy's in the universe also? Well, well Family Guy would have... Well, well it, it, since Jeopardy's in, the, in our hypothetical universe, Family Guy would be in it automatically because uh, Peter Griffin no, was on uh, Family Guy when he answered uh, who is uh, Zila... Uh, uh, Kiebert and Zila. But also... No, Adam, it, Adam it, West. It, but, but, Adam and Adam West. West. But, but also... If we're talking about Merv Griffin shows, Peter was on Wheel of Fortune. You know, when he asked yes. for the Batman symbol. The so oh, yeah. Four <laughs> Q, uh, second Q, a third Q, 
Batman symbol. Is it Alex Karras in Webster? How did you solve that? <laughs> and but also, also but... Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin was a contestant on The Price is Right. Yes, he was. Uh, but but also, just Family Guy, I think, connects to a whole ton of stuff because there's so many pop culture references that, you know, that, that come from shows either already in the universe or are not in the universe. So, yeah, that, that sort of has the uh, a lot of, like, pull, a lot of strength, sort of like that Morley pack of cigarettes. I think we've, like, connected. I think television effectively is one giant hallucination in the mind of Tommy Westfall. And you can thank us for that, Internet. Which, but there's another question, Mike. If all of television is in Tommy Westfall's head, what is television in the universe Tommy Westfall lives in? Think about that. I didn't expect such a philosophical question at this hour of night. My God, my head is my head is blown. Yeah, that that's a little too much to handle at this time, I think. Yeah, I I you know what? I think that's a good place to stop. Yeah, I'm starting to get a migraine. Thank you, Greg. So, yeah, we're going to stop right here, but there's the big revelation that we wanted to, to bring forward. Specifically, Hello Larry's characters, they were on Password Plus, and then Mama's Family's characters were there, which uh, also not just Mama's Family, but also the Carol Burnett show, and that connects to so many other things, surely. And that, th- that, can I, you know what? Comment on this, because this was actually a question that was posed uh, over the summer. <sighs> okay, this is a. For those of you who know me, this is part of the, the year-end quote wall. And b. This was an actual question asked by our good friend Adam Needif. Hi, Adam. <sighs> For 15 points. No, no, not this. Oh, oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Continue. This is great. For 15 points, Will Smith's surrogate cousin Hillary appeared on an episode of NBC's hit sitcom Blossom. Another episode of Blossom featured Don Novello playing the role of Father Guido Sarducci. And Father Guido Sarducci also popped up on an episode of Married with Children. Stay with me here. David Faustino's character Bud Bundy also popped up on the Fox Network sitcom Parker Lewis Can't Lose. In another episode of Parker Lewis Can't Lose, Parker crosses paths with grown-up Eddie Haskell, who, of course, we all remember from Leave it to Beaver. His next-door neighbors June, Wally, and Beaver Cleaver were all characters in an episode of The Love Boat. Now, there's this other episode of The Love Boat where all of Charlie's Angels are on board. In an episode of Charlie's Angels, Dan Tana shows up from Vegas, but that's not important right now. Remember when I said Parker Lewis had crossed paths with Eddie Haskell? Well, Eddie also popped up on an episode of Hi Honey, I'm Home. So did Gail Gordon's character, Mr. Mooney, who you might remember from The Lucy Show. There's an episode of The Lucy Show where Lucy crosses paths with Private Gomer Pyle, USMC, who, of course, originally appeared on The Andy Griffith Show, which was a spinoff of Make Room for Daddy. On an episode of Make Room for Daddy, Danny encounters Buddy Thrill, one of Alan Brady's writers on The Dick Van Dyke Show. Alan Brady later appeared on Mad About You, where Ursula was the twin sister of Phoebe from Friends, and Phoebe's friend Chancellor Bing shot up on Caroline in the City, where Caroline draws a popular comic strip that is read and enjoyed by Daphne Moon, the caretaker of Dr. Fraser Crane's disabled father. Dr. Crane used to hang out at a Boston bar called Cheers, where Norm Clip and Carla encounter Drs. Oshlander and Westfall, but on, an, on a landmark 1988 broadcast, we learned that Doctors Oshlander and Westfall never existed, and that all the shows I mentioned in this question are logically the figments of the imagination of Tommy Westfall, who is the only character who demonstrably existed on what beloved medical drama? That was a question on remote control for this year's game show Throwdown, and I was dead. And I think everybody in the audience was dead. I don't even know if it got answered because... It was it was that lengthy, that well written, and that hilarious. So yeah, Adam Nita, uh, if you don't know uh, him, this is definitely something he, he would do. Uh, brilliant individual, funny individual. 
Uh, also, gonna give him a little shout out here because him and Matt Ottinger, they run maybe the definitive uh, Bill Cullen site, the Bill Cullen Archive at BillCullen.net. Please go visit. Adam's also written a slew of books, and they're all top notch. So please give him some of your time and some of your money. You'll definitely be rewarded. Okay, does uh, that mean that Adam Needham's also a part of the uh, Tommy Westfall universe? Okay, I better stop now. Well, actually, well, I'm, hold up. I'm, I'm oh, looking yeah. here, and you mentioned Saturday Night Live because uh, Father Guido Sarducci was on an episode of Married with Children, which I know he was, season, I believe it was season 10 episode. Uh, there was a seance for, uh, for Buck the Dog because he had died. And, oh, I remember that episode. And, and Father Guido Sarducci ran the seance. But the thing is, Saturday Night Live is not in the Tommy Westfall universe, at least as of yet. But also we could tie it in with Celebrity Jeopardy and Black Jeopardy. because And also Jeopardy 1999. Because technically there is no Jeopardy. Uh, th- those shows don't exist unless they, you know, they came from Tommy, uni- uh, Tommy Westfall's universe. Again, we're just like... Blowing so, this wide open, so, like everything. So, so, so wait, wait, Sean. So we Errol Hammond, Sean Connery is a figment of Tommy Westfall's imagination. At this point, anything could be a part of Tommy Westfall's imagination. So yeah, we just like blew everything wide open. And yeah, I think we all need our brains to like relax after that because we've done some mind blowing stuff. So, yeah, as we said earlier, please definitely go visit uh, BillCullen.net. Give Adam Needif and, and Matt Ottinger some of your time. You'll love their sites, or their combined site, I should say. As for us, I think we need to relax after this one. This this, this was quite a trip, and it wasn't uh, a very long trip. It was just very a very deep trip. It was a very deep trip because the Tommy Westfall universe – Fast as it is, yeah, it was a thing on TV. And even hypothetically, it wasn't just a thing on TV. It could have been TV itself. It was a thing. Tommy Westfall might be television. Oh, yeah, that might be. This is too. This is too deep, Mike. This is it, too it, deep. It's, it's, way, it's way too deep. I absolutely agree with you. So we'll just wrap it up by saying, as always. You can find us at ItWasAThingOnTV.com. Please feel free to give us feedback, ideas, encouragement, money. Nah, we're not going to ask for money. But if you want to give money, absolutely, we won't uh, we won't reject it. Uh, you can reach us through email at contact at ItWasAThingOnTV.com. And uh, all our social media can be found on that web page as well, ItWasAThingOnTV.com. As always, you guys do a phenomenal job. This is a great episode. Greg, thank you for what you've contributed. This is amazing. Chico, thank you for what you contributed. I I think we're going to blow some minds. Oh, yeah. We're going to blow some minds, and then we're going to blow away because, well, let's just say the next episode is going to move very fast. Yes. Well, the next two episodes are going to move very fast. We'll say that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no other hints besides that. So again, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for listening. Please, if you like our show, tell your friends. Tell your friends' friends. Tell your coworkers. Tell other people. We, we we'd love to uh, have more people listening to this. As the kids would say, like and subscribe. That's a good way of putting it. Like and subscribe. I, I didn't think of putting it that way. So like and subscribe and and, and give us money. No, no, don't give us money. No, like, no, nobody's giving anybody money yet. N- n- yet, yet. Keyword yet. <laughs> so again, thank you. We will talk to you next week for two more episodes. Until then, please have a good remainder of the week. Thanks for listening. Bye bye. Hello, Tommy Westfall Universe. Hello, Tommy Hello, Westfall, Westfall Universe. Universe. Hello, Tommy Westfall Universe. Hello, Tommy Westfall Universe. No. Portland's a long way from St. Allegis. A long, long way. That doesn't work that well. No, no, no. no.